I'm gonna put him in this little pot. It's pretty tight squeeze, but he'll love it. He's gonna love it. Yay, he's gonna be so happy. Hey guys, it's Georgia. Today, I'm going to teach you guys how to propagate your plants. So the things that you need to propagate are nice sharp secateurs, invest in a good pair. If you're gonna collect plants, collect the right tools for them. A nice cloth. These ones with a little bit of fiber, like the microfiber cloths are the best for plants because they actually pick up, you know, the residue and things when you're cleaning them as opposed to just wiping them around. And the vessel, and you need a vessel. I'm gonna use this beautiful little jar I got from the op shop um, with just a little bit of water in it. In terms of like the water, I just use straight up tap water. Some people get a bit pedantic with that, but it's not super high tech, you know, water is water. Um, another thing you can put in the bottom if you're really worried about bacteria, funky stagnant water is a bit of um, activated charcoal, antibacterial, antifungal product. Uh, but realistically, just changing the water once a week, once we've propagated it, that'll do. That's enough for your plant hygiene. That's enough to keep, you know, funky smells from happening. And then some nice, good quality Russian vodka, only the best for your lovely babes. And the reason we need this is for hygiene. We're performing surgery here. We're actually taking an incision. So I would definitely only use white alcohol, like rubbing alcohol straight up. I wouldn't use um, antibacterial anything or hand sanitizer, um, just because you don't know what the fragrances are in that, all those residual gels and stuff. Probably not ideal for plants. Just go straight for the alcohol. It's worth, it'll be worth it. Let's get started then. Cool, so I put a bit of the rubbing alcohol on my cloth and I'm just going to clean around a node. So what is a node? A node is where a leaf forms and usually along a node on these aroid type species is we have these little aerial roots. That's awesome, that's what we're looking for. When you're taking a cutting like this, generally speaking, you want two nodes. So I can see here below this sheath is that we've got another node here where an, a leaf is poking out. So I'm gonna go one, two, and cut here. I could cut here as well, but the further along you get, the more energy the plant has to use to transfer information from photosynthesizing at the leaves to growing roots at the base. So that's why two nodes is best because it's enough for it to have integrity, but also that transition of information is short. So you're gonna get vigorous growth more quickly as opposed to you know a few dead leaves along the way before they push out. What we need to think about is when this gets cut, the energy of the plant is gonna revert back into the mother plant or it's gonna revert back into my new plant, which means that all of this flesh underneath a node is gonna die back. So the closer I can get to these aerial roots, the better, because that means my fresh cutting is gonna use more energy producing leaves and less energy getting rid of redundant stem matter. So generally speaking, you like to cut uh, plants on a bit of an angle, just for nutrient uptake, it's just healthy for plants. Um, it's just the way they're structured. So find a nice little angle and cut, ta-da, gooey. Um, keeping in mind that philodendrons are toxic to humans and animals, even though you can eat some of their fruits, all of this gooey stuff, try and obviously avoid getting it near your eyes and your mouth. It'll give you a pretty nasty rash. I'm gonna put him in this little pot all the way down into the water. It's a pretty tight squeeze, but he'll love it. He's gonna love it. Ta-da! And that's literally it, like that's it. Yay, he's gonna be so happy. So I personally like to propagate straight into water because I can see what's going on like with this guy, straight away. You can see as soon as the roots kind of hit the bottom and start to, you know, turn into a little ripple going in circles, I think, okay, cool, I'm gonna put you in potting medium. Your other option is putting your bare root cuttings straight into substrate. Here we have a verichism that's been put into sphagnum moss. Again, I like using glass jars so I can see what's going on. I can physically see is there humidity against the glass between the moss. Does it need water? Have the roots come through to the bottom yet? The other thing to do when you're growing it in substrate as a cutting is like put a piece of plastic over it or you can grow it in an enclosed terrarium. That's to keep the biome of the plant clean, clear, free of pathogens. So by keeping this protection over it, you're creating a mini little environment where that plant's like, okay, it's just me, I can do this, I can grow. When it comes to deciding when to repot your, from propagation to you know, a substrate or a soil mixture, what I like to look for is in the roots. Again, using glass is ideal because you can actually see what's going on. 
I see that there's all these fibrous roots. The tips of these ones are bright gold. That's healthy, that's fresh. But there's also some brown roots happening and that's dieback. And that gives me an idea that this plant's graduated the soil, the water vessel and it's ready for soil. So yeah, time to, um, time to pot up at that point. And that's it. It's as easy as that. It's not rocket science. And this is how you share and care with your friends. So give it a go. You can do it. Thank you.